Lesson 1.4 is fractional exponents. So we're using the same exponent rules we've learned, but just with fractions. It says evaluate the left-hand side to find the value of a in the equation in simplest form. So you're actually not solving an equation on this. This is your problem that really you're trying to simplify, and you know they have a base of x, so you're having x to some new power. So they just want the power as the answer. So we know that we're multiplying exponents, and when we do that, that means we keep the base of the exponent and we're going to add the powers. So you have to remember rules with fractions. Five is a whole number, you put it over one to make it a fraction. When you're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator, which means the same bottom number. So I'm gonna do the work for the fractions over here. And I'm looking at my denominators of one and three. I can never go smaller than a number. I always have to go a number or bigger. So my least common multiple of one and three would be actually three. So if this is staying three, this can stay five. One times what would make this denominator of three? Three. Whatever I multiply on the bottom, I have to multiply the same number on the top. So five times three would be 15. So 15 divided by three or 15 thirds really is five. So they're equivalent fractions, meaning the same value, I just kind of magnified them by three. <clears throat> now I can add. When I add fractions, I just add the numerator. So five plus 15 is 20 thirds. It's saying thirds plus thirds is how many thirds? So really this problem is x to the 20 thirds. Don't type that in though on Delta Math. They're literally just gonna want the 20 thirds for your A. All right, let's try number two. We see that we're dividing exponents. X to something divided by X to something. We know that when we divide, we're actually subtracting the powers. So when I add or subtract, we have to have common denominator. I'm gonna write the fractions over here, give me more room. Three and five, least common multiple would be 15. So I'm gonna make both fractions have a new denominator 15. Ask yourself three times what made 15? Three times five. 5 times 5 would be 25. So 25 fifteenths actually would reduce back to 5 thirds, so it's equivalent. 5 times 3 makes 15. 6 times 3 is 18. Then you just subtract 25 minus 18, which is 7 fifteenths. Again, it would be x to the 7 fifteenths, but all they want is the power. All right, and then number 3. This is your exponent raised to a power, so your power rule. That means keep the base and we multiply the powers. I love multiplying and dividing fractions because you don't need a common denominator. You can just multiply. When you multiply, you multiply straight across. So that means multiply your numerators, multiply your denominators. One times five is five. Five times four is 20. 5 over 20, think of if it were 20 over 5, that'd be 4, this is 1 fourth. That would be your answer. Also hope you remember that when you're multiplying fractions, you can cross simplify because this problem is really like 1 times 5 over 5 times 4. Well, 5 divided by 5 makes 1, so they simplify, then 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4. It's called cross simplification. So I always cross simplify. Even if these aren't the same number, you can still divide out a common factor.